The morning pre-planned to continue our chapters with what happened last after the tempest. Now Gondru was staying with King of Naples, Antonio, and Sebastian in one part of the island with other followers. Gondru noticed that King of Naples was dying from grief. Grief means what? Great sadness. And why he was sad? Remember that he saw his own son Ferdinand jumping into the water during the storm or the tempest. King of Naples felt that he lost his son forever. He was very sad, but Gonzalo, the advisor or the counselor, tried to comfort him by telling him that many women lose their husbands daily in the sea. Others wouldn't survive such a storm. King of Naples was in great grief, wouldn't feel any happiness as he thought that he wouldn't find Ferdinand again. At the same time, who was listening to this conversation and mocking? Mocking means he didn't care about the grief or sadness of King of Naples. Antonio, the Duke of Milan, and Sebastian, King Naples' uh, brother. Okay? And there was an evil or wicked plan going on. What was happening? Antonio thought that it may be the chance to get rid of King of Naples. How? We will know now. Now Antonio began to tell Sebastian a wicked plan. He began to tell him, Sebastian, let's see your chance to be the King of Naples like I came the King of Milan. How? Ferdinand is dead. He is lost. He jumped into the water. We couldn't find him on the island. And the king's daughter was now the queen of another country, of Tunis. And it's a perfect chance to do like me. What I did with Prospero. Remember what Antony did with Prospero? He betrayed him when he plotted with King of Naples to control Milan and kick him out of the kingdom. Now Sebastian began to think seriously of getting rid of his brother King of Naples. While they were speaking, Errol the Sparrow was listening to their plan and made the other people, King of Naples, Gonzalo and the other followers, fell asleep. Sebastian and Antonio were planning secretly, the others were asleep and they began to do what they planned for. But what had happened? Yes, we are waiting to know what had happened. While Antonio and Sebastian held their swords out, to kill King of Naples, Errol the Spirit made the others to be awake, and the first one to be awake was Gonzalo. When he saw this scene, he was so surprised and shocked. He asked them why they are holding their swords up, and he tried to give an excuse. He said that he heard some wild animals, and we were trying to protect the king. Gonzalo didn't believe them and he felt danger. King of Naples then was awake and decided to go around the island again to search for his son Ferdinand. Okay, trip one, let's continue. On the other side of the island, there was a man who survived from the shipwreck. He was dressed in colored clothes. He was the king's court jester. He was Trancalo. His name is Trancalo. Gesture means that a clown. And on the other side also there was another survivor. He was a Stefano. Stefano was the king's butler. Butler means the one who is responsible about serving the wine for the king. He was drunk, was having a bottle of rose water, and when he saw Caliban, he thought that first he is a monster. So what about Caliban? Caliban was actually afraid from them both and he thought that Stefano was a magician like Prospero and decided to worship him. Why he decided to worship him? We know that Calvin from the beginning was thinking that Prospero made him a slave but he deserved to be the king of the island. Caliban wanted to get rid of Prospero by the help of Stefano whom he believed a god and have powers he considered himself the king of the island and he wanted his island back to him. Okay, Pepin, let's continue. Prosper's plan was going well as Miranda and Ferdinand fell in love. 
Ferdinand wanted to marry Miranda and wasn't bothered by her father's harsh treatment. How he treated him in a harsh way. He used to ask him to collect wood. He treated him as a slave. Casper didn't show any kind treatment to Ferdinand. At the same time, Miranda felt sorry for Ferdinand and began to ignore her father's orders. He asked her not to speak to Ferdinand, but she was speaking to what she wouldn't leave him. She wanted to help him in collecting the looks of wood. Ferdinand began to speak about his past life with Miranda. He told her that I am a prince in my country, maybe now I am a king. I'm not sure if my father survived the tempest. And Ferdinand felt very sorry to lose his father as he felt. Miranda told him that she would support him with anything he wants. Ferdinand said that he can handle the life of slavery. Slavery means to be a slave as long as she is there. Now Ferdinand and Miranda they fell in love together and he asked her to marry him. Casper was very pleased to hear all the conversation but he thought okay I'm going to continue with my plan for revenge I'm not going to be kinder or forgive anybody. What about Caliban? Caliban was inheriting part from his mother's bad nature Cyclex and wanted to harm Prospero and Miranda. As you remember before, Prospero treated Caliban badly when he began to try to attack Miranda. Because of that, he kept him away from the house inside the cave. Now, Pepin, what happened next? Caliban, Stefano, and Tranquillo moved to a place by the sea on the island. There was a barrel. What was inside the barrel? Rose water or wine. Stefano began to drink and he gave to Caliban to drink also and Tranquilla. Now Caliban considered Stefano as his god and he decided to worship him. Okay? And Tranquilla was finding that like a joke because he knew that Stefano was only butler or the one responsible about the wine. Now Caliban began to tell Stefano about his plan. He told him that I was once the king of the island. I want my island back. You can be the king of the island. Take me as your slave and kill Prospero. When he was telling Stefano his plan, Errol the spirit was listening carefully and began to speak in Tranquilo voice and said to Caliban, liar. Caliban was so angry and said, I'm not a liar. Stefano punished Tranquillo for that. Tranquillo said, I swear I didn't speak. Okay, but Stefano didn't believe him. After that, Caliban told Stefano, I have a plan. You can go to Prosper's house. He sleeps in the afternoons. You can kill him. He has got a daughter, Miranda. Miranda was so beautiful. Once I asked her to marry me, but she refused. Now, you can be the king of the island and marry Miranda and make her the queen. That's the perfect plan. After that, Ariel, with her magic, made drums and pipes to make noise all around them. Stefano and Tranquilo were amazed and shocked, but Caliban told them not to worry, the island is full of magic. Now, prep one, let's go back to the group of King of Naples. King of Naples was still searching for his son Ferdinand, but there was no sign of him. Gonzalo was still trying to comfort him, yet Antonio and Sebastian, the king's brother, were happy. Why they were happy? As King of Naples didn't find his son Ferdinand. Antonio reminded Sebastian of their plan, killing King of Naples, and asked him not to wake him. Suddenly, Errol the spirit appeared with music and shapes like ghosts were flying around they were white wearing shining clothes and carried some huge plates of food and a drink Errol greeted the group and asked them to eat and drink as they must be tired what about Prospero? Prospero was watching he was able to watch all of that but nobody could see him Gonzalo, the counselor, said that the island was full of strange things. They were about to eat from the food 
when Earl appeared again, but this time she was totally different. She was in a terrifying shape. Her wings were black, not white. She had long, sharp claws and teeth. She landed in the middle of the table and spoke in threatening voice. Now Earl appeared on the middle of the table and began to speak to King of Naples and his companions. But before she began to speak, they were terrified, they tried to attack her with their swords. She said, you are fools, my companions and I are the servants of fate. Your weak swords cannot harm one hair of us. You may as well try to stab the sea and went. We have turned it against you because of your ugly crime. She meant him the crime of deceiving Prospero, which I now accuse and remind you of. So, Errol tried to remind them that past history always follow you, whenever and wherever you go, and you have to pay for your own mistakes. Okay, she began to speak to King of Navy. She reminds him that he have lost his son, but this is a punishment. Why a punishment for him for what he did with Prospero and his daughter Miranda? Now Prospero was listening to all of that, but King of Naples, when he heard that, remembered his plotting with Antonio against Prospero and began to be filled with feelings of guilt and regret and decided to continue his search for Ferdinand and others followed. Prospero, after watching all the performance that Aral that he was so happy that the King of Naples felt great guilt. But now he asked himself, is it time for revenge or forgiveness? He had been planning for years how to have his revenge from his enemies, but now he thought that forgiveness will be better. He said that forgiveness can be better and easier, and then he found Ferdinand. He brought Ferdinand and told him that he had passed all the tests to prove his love to Miranda, and he blesses their marriage. Ferdinand was so happy and couldn't imagine that Prospero began to treat him in a very different way. Ferdinand promised to be faithful and to give respect to Miranda. Errol was ordered to bring King of Naples and his group to Prosper's house. Caledon, Stefano, and Trancalo were coming nearer to Prosper's house to kill him. Now, dear students, we are waiting for the end. Is it going to be merciful or easy? It's going to be harsh and difficult. Now, Errol made ghosts of white ducks to chase the three of them. They were scared and began to run. Who are the three? Stefano, Francalo, and Calavan. Why they came to Prosper's house? They came to kill him. Prosper was watching, laughing, and asked Aaron not to harm them. Behind his house, Prosper watched flames of fire, waiting for the king's group to arrive, and began to think that it was time to end the whole struggle. Aaron felt sorry for the king of Naples as he was crying for the loss of his son Ferdinand. Prospero made the decision to forget and ask his Arab to prepare the ship and bring the bosun. Remember the bosun? The bosun man? The bosun man that had a quarrel with Gonzalo and King of Naples. Prospero welcomed them all and told King of Naples that he forgives him. Then he showed his son Ferdinand to him. King of Naples couldn't imagine that his own son was still alive and he thought that he was just a spirit. But Ferdinand told him that he was saved during the tempest and told him that he wants his permission to marry Miranda, the daughter of the rightful King of Milan. Prospero spoke to Sebastian and Antonio by telling them that he knew all about their plotting. He wouldn't speak about it if he dropped it. They nodded their heads as agreement. Prospero told them that they would use the same ship to go back to Milan, and he broke his magic cane and buried his magic books and cloak. 
The bowser man appeared, and Gamzuru wasn't surprised. He told him, I know that you would never drown, because you will be hanged one day. The bowser man said that I woke up, I was on the ship, and looked around, I found everything just as the same day of the tempest. What about Caliban, Stefano, and Trancalo? They appeared beside Prosperous' house again, but Prosperous said, that I forgave you all for planning to kill me. Prosper told Caliban that the person whom he thought a god was only the king's butler, the one responsible about the wine. Caliban thought that he was stupid to think that this person, Stephano, was a god. Now Prosper said goodbye to Erod Gasparic as he gave her the freedom she has been asking for. Prospero began to think the future that waiting for him to go back to Milan as a ruler.